If Rogue Mage Druid is capable of overcoming this matchup because Change My Mind were reluctant to run it. Here, Burley, Fuston, and Joel, they've had a warm up. I will say they improved drastically throughout their series against Change My Mind. So they're going to be at a pretty nice stance here against Diabolus. Burley getting silenced early on, which makes me wonder if Nixie's going to be pressuring the Shaman. Asgrath moves over to pressure the Shaman. And we may see a situation where Alec needs to crowd control the Demon Hunter and the Death Knight. Very similarly to when we saw the Mew Mew Kitty Cat sub in Rosita Jones. So Alec's main objective should be Frost Nova and Blizzard on as many targets as possible, such as this in the center, and then avoid being attacked. And then double blink in to attack Burley whenever they're going for stun lock combos to remove that Ghost Wolf. If Alec can execute on that strategy, Asgrath and Nixie can stay on target, then I think Diabolus can take this. Of course, DHDK Nation can rotate defensive cooldowns, such as the Darkness, the Anti-Magic Zone, to prevent kills during these windows of time, and then slowly ramp up and try to Mana Rift Asgarath. I will say, though, Fuston's positioning, I'd much rather see him next to Burly and not stacked up on Joel. They both just had a full Frost Nova 80 yards away from their healer, who is just being pressured down by Asgarath and Nixie. Alec looking to connect with that Frozen Orb. Burly manages to survive the attack for now. DHDK Nation, though, have limited offense, finally starting to pressure down Asgarath. I actually think Asgarath should ultimately be the target. Yeah, it definitely could be, but Alec just really focusing on control in this matchup. Here's a big setup. Early forced to trink it out. Alec finally getting in a position where he could get that Kleptomania spell steal overlapped with the kidney shot. And anytime that happens, it is scary for this Restoration Shaman. The next one is going to be devastating. You can see no Astral Shift, no trinket available for Burley in this matchup. Houston, of course, he does have the Darkness, but playing Relentless is a little bit of a gamble. It does reduce all of the incoming crowd control but if Alec can land a full Frost Nova on Houston, he's not going to be able to, you know, get in a position where he can actually drop that darkness and help out Burley. All right, let's see if they can get the crowd control and the burst executed here. They opt to trade the anti-magic zone more than a fair trade for Alec's Icy Veins. Easy exchange for DHDK Nation. Asgrath and Nixie, though, keeping up their hunt towards Burley to try and kill him. Of course, Pack Spirit, Spectral Recovery combined together going to be super effective for the Shaman to stay alive. Effectively, you could just run around in Ghost Wolf and heal through a freight train. And deeper into dampening, it may become more difficult. Or if Alec is able to get in position to spell steal the Ghost Wolf off, such as a situation like this, where Burley is stunned, that is a moment of opportunity for Diabolus to get a kill. But if they aren't able to, they can't strip off the Ghost Wolf, they can't burst him down in the stun, and he continues to survive. Asgaras mana will start to dwindle away, and when he runs out of zero, then the damage from the Demon Hunter and the Death Knight is going to stick. And at that point, DHDK Nation will actually have the advantage. And Asgaroth finally getting swapped to. Lots of burst damage coming in from Houston and Joel. Asgaroth has actually almost ran out of time in terms of mana. Early has been able to survive. He almost has the Shrinky. The yes, the Astral Shift is a big setup attempt here from Diabolus. But if the game keeps playing out this way, I mean, if Early can survive, this is going to be good. He drops the Spirit Link Totem. Good safe play there by Barely. But Diabolus, they're actually running out of time. I could easily see them losing this matchup. Now, these Rogue Mage Druid teams are talking about how they just walk all over Demon Hunter Death Knight. But I've yet to be convinced of that, really. I mean, Barely. He's able to hold on. He's able to survive. Nixie trying to solo him down, but Asgaroth not really in the best position right now in terms of mana to play super aggressive. Burley into another kidney shot. Alec with the spell seal. This is an opportunity, but Burley does manage to survive once again. If he can get back into Ghost Wolf across the map, he's going to be A-OK. -okay. They have to combine Bash and Kidney Shot. They can't kill Burley in just one stun. It has to be two stuns, if not even three stuns in succession to be able to kill the Shaman. And that's only going to be happening when Vanish is available, Bash is available, or Asgarath, if he's running Feral Affinity, can stealth and then stun. But right now, Nixie has just been doing Kidney Shots on cooldown. And I really don't like that. I think that there should be time in the stuns when Alec can get there. Once Alec has got crowd control on the Demon Hunter and the Death Knight, if they remain uncoordinated, then they're effectively attacking a brick wall. This Shaman will take absolutely zero damage unless they all coordinate together. And at that point, Asgrath is just going to run out of mana. So DHDK Nation are actually looking good here in game number one. I think the disadvantage that the Shaman brings is that deep and dampening, they have to cast heals, and if you have to cast heals and you're the only one casting spells, there's two interrupts, so you will be interrupted and your team will die and get overwhelmed. But that situation only happens if Asgarath has mana, which he doesn't. So right now, unless Diabolus clean up their offense, start chaining their stuns together, DHDK Nation are looking good to take game one.
Yeah, they're looking great. Barely once again, he's just holding on. He's doing a good job rotating through his defensives. Houston finally able to get some good counter pressure off onto Asgroth, who's activated his Barkin. He's trying to cross the map. He's trying to avoid the mana rifts. Alec with good backup, good, really good control, honestly, from Alec in this matchup so far. His Novas, his Ice Novas, his Freezes from his pet has just been on point. He's been able to really try to deny Houston and Joel lots of momentum in the matchup, but slowly but surely, they've still been able to get the mana lead. Asgroth sitting down for a drink right now that gets interrupted unfortunately now he has to wait to get out of combat so he can try to sit down for a drink but Houston jumps over a nice stun into a mana rift once again Asgrath almost completely tapped on mana Burly it's a different story the thing about training down a restoration shaman is he basically doesn't use any mana to heal himself so at this point in the game where Asgrath's completely out of mana Burly he hasn't used any mana to keep himself alive now he has a full mana bar where he can throw out purges and DHDK nation can get really aggressive Yep, I would like to see DHDK Nation turn the tables here and just go aggressive. Burley's more than survived long enough. Although, wait for the Vendetta, then make the play. I mean, there's no Icy Veins, there's no Vendetta. You still have Astral Shift, Spirit Link Totem's coming up. You still have Anti Magic Zone. You have every single cooldown. You have the Druid out of mana. I think now is the time where you start to play aggressive. Spend some of that mana, get some Flame Shock, get some Purges, get some Lava Bursts. Houston getting sapped out of the crowd control. Nixie trying to do everything he can for his team to stall. They go for the game winning stun here on Burley, but anti magic zone is available. So DHD condition can burn through these cooldowns one by one and then overwhelm with purges, I believe, here shortly if Burley feels confident to do so. He is being pressured. He has to navigate it closely because if he gets stunned out of Ghost Wolf, then he could easily actually lose the game. But also adding purges could just end the game and win the match uh -oh. for his team. And DHDK Nation, they're coming in to the tournament as a fresh roster. They took out Change My Mind in a surprising fashion and now looking to do the same to Diabolus. I mean, Asgrath, Alec, Nixie, these three guys, they're 2017 BlizzCon champions. DHDK Nation, they're just some pals stepping into the tournament together for the first time and really taking it to the rainy of the previous champs. Yeah, all it takes is the power of teamwork and friendship sometimes. Alec gets bursted down to around 30% health. He's got no ice blocks for another four minutes, but Askarov trying to create pressure on the Restoration Druid with that Feral Affinity. He's got no mana left. Burly, he can afford to start throwing out a few purges, but I, I really feel like this matchup is going hugely in favor of DHDK Nation. Burly's got no trinket. Can they take him down and a huge all-in? If they have the damage to take him down, this would be an absolute miracle. There's no darkness. There's no anti-magic zone. Burly, he just trades out the Spirit Link totem. He realizes they're at the finish line. He doesn't want to throw away the game, but he doesn't get much health. Nixie he kills it off almost instantly. Burly's still in some trouble. Astral Shift, Earthen Wall Totem. He's throwing out purges to try to take down Alec. Alec could easily just fall right now and end up, he end up will falling in this matchup. DHDK Nation take game number one against Diablo. It's completely unexpected. Hunter Death Knight, and I mean, whoever wins here could well sign signal over to what, what goes on over there. So Europe may be leading here, but then again, we've seen that North America has actually been leading the meta a little bit this year. Cloud Nine strategy is crowd control the Demon Hunter. Just remove the Demon Hunter from the game. Don't let Fuston get any global cooldowns off, and you can do that when you have Fear and Polymorph and Frost Nova. They just crowd control the Demon Hunter, remove Mana Rift from the game, and then Asgrath will have full mana, you're in dampening, and you kill the Death Knight. That is the simplest way of explaining the strategy for the Mage Warlock Druid. You don't want to fall into the trap of trying to net a kill prior to dampening. The self-healing on the Demon Hunter and the Death Knight is just far too high with the lack of a Mortal Wounds effect on the composition. But you're not lacking crowd control, so you can already see. They're just polymorphing the Death Knight, fearing the Demon Hunter, switching the Fear and the Poly likely to the opposite target, now polying the Demon Hunter, fearing the Death Knight, just crowd controlling them, preventing them from attacking, building any momentum or getting any mana rifts. And then a situation can happen deep and dampening where the only weird thing that could go wrong in that strategy is if Burly is also full mana and purges from the Shaman end up being a game fa deciding factor. And that's the one thing that I haven't seen yet between this type of play uh, that the teams are bringing is what happens if the Shaman and the Druid are equal on mana deep and dampening. Does it still go in favor of Diabolus or can the Shaman be the factor that actually makes it in favor of DHDK Nation? And that's really going to decide the rest of the series because otherwise Diabolus can just run this strategy on every single map. Frost Nova the Demon Hunter, although they're they're not timing it when they stun Asgarath. So right here, they're actually getting a mana rift, although they can crowd control him for so long that it's likely that Asgarath just regenerates the mana that was rifted every 
whatever the better part of 30 seconds so uh, it could just work spamming crowd control the way that they are rather than timing it during the stuns as grass should just run around in stealth avoid them at all costs and just wait for dampening yeah alec doing a good job you can watch in this game he's going to be spamming out the pet freeze ice novas frost novas Polymorph, that's the main mini game. Asgaroth just kiting Fuston through his mage. His mage trying to back him up in the game. That way he can escape, get out of combat, avoid the mana rifts, drink as much as possible. And Walrus needs to try to start finding some damage in this matchup if he can. But Joel, he's been doing a really good job of shutting him down so far in this game. And this is probably one of those games that is going to require 20, 30% dampening. I think 30, 30, 40. 30, 40% dampening. Diablos, they have to hold on to their mana until that point. That's when they really start securing an advantage where they can take down uh, a high uh, hit point target like Joel, like Fuston. These guys can heal themselves for quite a bit on the death end of the Demon Hunter, but later on in the game, that healing just gets nerfed by so much because of dampening that they eventually just fall down. The thing I would like to see potentially from DHDK Nation is using their interrupts in succession to stop crowd control when they're using offensive cooldowns. So the Ray's Abomination is definitely one, or the Metamorphosis or the I-Beam. So saving their interrupts when they have these cooldowns to enhance their damage, saving their stuns for those moments of opportunity as well. That way they can get some uptime during their cooldowns, which is the most important time to be attacking a target is during your offensive cooldowns. And then maybe they can net a kill or build some momentum or force Asgarath to spend a little bit more mana than usual. So far, their interrupts are on cooldown. We've got Winch here for Burley. Can interrupt for Fuston, but he's polymorphed around the corner. Asgrass certainly actually should be trying to drink. His mana is not as high as I expected at this point with how much crowd control has been tossed at DHDK Nation, but Burley looks like he's even trying to chase Asgrath around the map. And this is that situation where if it's deep and dampening, I'm not actually sure. I think the Shaman might be able to add enough momentum to the team and then grounding totem to stop crowd control and they can, might be able to push the warlock over with spam purges so unless asgrath is also matched on mana i actually think dhdk nation can take this and right now mana is already down to half even despite the crowd control from diabolus i think that's completely fair to say i mean asgrath he hasn't been able to sneak away for a drink just yet dhdk nation they did a phenomenal job in their last series we saw today against Change My Mind. They're doing a great job here. Walrus has been under pressure. Walrus really hasn't been able to get out too much damage whatsoever. And, I mean, although Diabolus, they have been managing to hold on. Alex has been doing a good job getting control on Fuston. They haven't found any damage. There's no offense here from Diabolus. They're just kind of waiting until dampening to get really anything rolling. But you can see Ray of Frost is going to be channeled out onto Fuston. Asgrath gets into stealth. He's trying to line of sight. He's trying to avoid... Fuston at all costs, but Alec has just been so distracted trying to stop Fuston that their damage output is just so limited. All right, let's see if Asgrath can manage to drink. I mean, his mana is not good enough. That is, that is a losing mana pool at the moment. Burley's moving over to snipe Asgarath. He slips away from the Capacitator Totem, crosses the map. Burley doesn't see him because he's in stealth, so Asgarath repositions. Burley actually anticipated that Asgarath would change sides, but gets caught into a fear. So Asgarath is regenerating some mana, I believe, here. Alec tried to Frost Nova them before they could connect. He did get some back, but certainly not equal with Burley. And we already saw that the purges from Burley in the last game were effective to net a kill. If he can have max mana as well, I'm almost wondering if this matchup is even that one-sided to the Mage Warlock or if they need to change the way they're playing. I mean, Cloud9 focused on crowd control, but not nearly to this extent. They would time their crowd control during mana rifts and then also counter-engage a little bit. Like, they wouldn't let Burley just sit in midfield doing whatever he wants. I think that they would attack him a bit, try and force him away, switch targets a little more frequently. Right now, Diabolus are just playing this almost predictably just their crowd control is just as soon as the diminishing return is over they're putting a player into crowd control in the meantime joel has actually got a huge necrotic strike stacked up on walrix which absorbs healing that darkened part of his health bar okay yeah it's immediately healed through i guess from Askarath as he comes back and pulls it through i was actually wondering if walrix 1v1ing the death knight was gonna surmount to that necrotic strike overwhelming him i actually think that joel is also running the zombie build i need to try and pay a little bit closer attention that's actually a nice strategy if he can connect those zombies while alec is too busy dealing with fused him that could be some percent health damage to get a kill but at this point i think dhdk nation are going to take it i mean diabolus have no control of their mana they're almost totally tapped burley's at full 
They have every defensive cooldown on DHDK Nation, and at any moment, Burley can flip the switch, start getting out some purges, and I think at that point, Walrus falls down. Yeah, anti-magic zone gets dropped out. Walrus needs to try to maneuver his way out of that. Otherwise, Joel and Houston, they can just get aggressive and really not have to worry about taking damage whatsoever. Alec with the Icy Veins finally starting to get some pressure rolling, but keep in mind, that was the Icy Veins. That was the Dark Soul. Joel, all he did was straight up the anti-magic zone. He sells the anti-magic shell. Burly with Spirit Link Totem with his trinket in a prime position to stay alive. And it's actually Walrix Hi. that's in trouble. Stun on Asgrath. Do they have the damage to take him down? Walrix in panic mode. Drops out the Infernals to try to counter engrage Mortal Coil onto Joel as well, but he easily denies any incoming damage with that anti magic shell. The Walrix, that was such a scary moment in Diabolus. They traded out essentially everything. Burley's mana completely fine. Asgrath almost completely tapped at this point. And now Walrix, if he's left alone for too long, those big necrotic strikes we saw. Joel being able to stack up are really going to start paying off. All right, Burley's chasing down Asgrath. I think they should just purge and win the game. I mean, there's no defense for 40 seconds. Just start attacking. Burley instead walks out and gets Polymorph, so now he can't add to the fight, although Asgrath can't really regenerate mana. I think it, as soon as Burley is out of crowd control, Walrix is dead. If he isn't already dead, I mean, this is quite telling because Method Orange were getting stomped by Cloud9 in this exact matchup. So if DHDK Nation can suddenly beat Mage Warlock Druid in the matchup, what does that say for tomorrow when we see Method Orange go up against Cloud9, perhaps if they're watching? Or we're going to get to see if Cloud9 plays the matchup the same way as Diabolus or how, how what are the differences? Because right now, I don't think that uh, Cloud9 were ever under this much stress that Diabolus currently are in the matchup. Burly is Polymorph. We are getting to that 40% dampening mark where the Death Knight is then deleted from the game. So if they can manage to make it to that point, they could actually still find the kill onto the Death Knight. But it's not looking likely. Walrix is overwhelmed. Iron Bark needs to be enough. But now there's absolutely no mana left in the tank. I'd love to see Burly almost just stand on top of Walrix, use Grounding Totem, mash out some purges, close the game out while there's no defense and no mana. Uh, you don't even really need to stop drinks at this point. Just use Spirit Link, use Darkness, stay on top of the Warlock and just outright kill him. They need to stop crowd control more frequently. This Polymorph on Burly is slowing down their assault and Asgrath was actually able to sneak away. I would love to see Burly just drink it aggressively, use Link and kill the Warlock. I mean, there's no defense, there's still oh! no mana. Joel is getting deleted. I feel like Burly is waiting far too long for this moment. He's not able to get the Tremor Totem out. Now he's got no Gladiator's Medallion. He had a bit of a panic attack. Now he's Frost Nova out of range. He had to dispel himself. He can't dispel his partners if they get feared. Joel is going to sit a full fear. That Walrus would otherwise be dead if he Purge. wasn't feared, but he may just die anyway. Walrus is finally going to get overwhelmed. Things looked like they were falling apart for THDK. Nate are not going to go down, so they have to kill the Shaman. But even then, I feel like... The, I don't know. The, the, the shaman is, should live. So there's. Well, I, I feel like there's two things that are going on right now. Either Burly, Houston, and Joel are like infinitely better than Method Nine in the Mage Warlock matchup. Method Nine. Or, or sorry, Method Orange. Or <laughs> Cloud lot, Nine. A lot of fun. Or there's Cloud fun. Nine is infinitely better at the Mage Warlock Druid, which I would I would probably argue is more true. But th we've seen like very limited shamans have any sort of success. Burly and his new team just come into the tournament. And they just toss away change my mind they're just fiddling around with diabolus now in the lower bracket to the point where they're locking in a composition that makes absolutely no sense on paper in this specific matchup i mean they're effectively attacking three targets that can't die to their comp they have no counters they have no disarms they have no purges they can't remove any of this healing the only thing that they maybe have is a gigantic chaos bolt but there's 10 different things they can do to stop one gigantic chaos bolt. Even in this situation, they could just use the darkness, use an anti-magic zone, use something. I mean, this, this is a lot of damage. Blur with the leech healing from Fuston should be enough for him to sustain while Burly is crowd controlled. If it isn't, Bur Fuston is actually running Nether Walk, so he has an, a similar cooldown to Ice Block. He can go immune to damage, which he just did oh. right before the stun. They actually drop Smoke Bomb into it. Maybe they're just trying to wait for it to end and then kill him. Burly get, walks into a big mistake here. Burly could have Tremor Totem the Sphere. They do manage to survive. There is decent damage onto the Demon Hunter. The Nether Walk keeps him alive for the Smoke Bomb, but they're still Infernals. They're still Vendetta. The composition is looking a lot more promising on the Demon Hunter than I think any of us could have anticipated, but still, if they don't get a kill on him earlier, then I do expect Walrix to be overwhelmed. I mean, keep in mind, Burly sat a full blind. <laughs> Shadow meld into a sap. Nixie runs back. A vanish saps him into a sap, into a garrote silence. 
and I mean Burley didn't even have to trade out the spirit link so it was a scary moment for Houston but you know blur isn't necessarily the longest cooldown for them to get they still have a lot that they can really work through now it's Walrex who's on the back foot he's used the unending resolve divine shields been used Diabolus just falling behind in terms of defensive cooldowns and blur once again gonna get activated by Houston in that moment but it's Walrex that's in the most trouble it is gonna be the blessing of protection that comes in from Asgroth and that will be enough for him to survive now full fear over on a Burley Houston could be in some trouble he drops out the darkness gonna be leech healing off of Nixie while in metamorphosis getting a lot of off healing in this situation Burley looking for a fake cast on the kick from Nixie but he doesn't have it available now full kidney shot spirit link totem is forced out and I have to say Diablos has a lot more pressure in this game than I first anticipated. That's the thing with Netherwalk. I'm pretty sure you drop Soul Rending, which enhances your leech healing. So your consistent ability to heal yourself is much lower when you're running Netherwalk, but you can survive a big hit window, which Houston was able to. Burley just trinket the blind. Okay, <laughs> Burley is going to trinket the blind. I feel like that was like the only way that they could lose is if Burley just sits everything and they don't make any fair trades. But there is a lot more damage going out on to Fuston than Whoa, anticipated. That's it's it. Good no night. It's over. Diabolus pull it off, going after the Demon Hunter. Yeah, absolutely crazy. We really thought that uh, that was going to go in favor of D on champions, guys that came second at the spring finals. Then you'll want to see them do well here because this is the opportunity for them going into the summer season to catch up with Change My Mind. But they need to reverse sweep this. Yeah. The original ABC roster with a kicker of Walrex, now known as Diabolus. Their backs are against the wall. They won the last game, but they're still one game away from being eliminated from this tournament. Good pressure early on on the Houston. Once again, we'll have to see what talents he's actually picking up. He is running in this the game. Soul so now he has a lot more self healing. That's what you would normally expect. The DK, the Demon Hunter normally aren't easy targets to take down, especially now that he can heal himself up just a little bit more. Unfortunately for Fuston in these matchups so far, he hasn't been able to land many consistent mana rifts onto Asgrath. Uh, he did trink it out early on, so if Fuston can get over, land another stun into mana rift, that's when they can start developing that mana lead we normally see uh, a DHDK sort of have. All right, the Dark Soul Valrix is going to be able to pull some important abilities and force Burley to trinket blind. I wouldn't even say force, so I think it's a fair trade, but Infernals and Vendetta available, so they could go for a big double punch here. Diabolus have opportunities to kill Fuston outright if he's not careful. He's trying to run away, but gets caught before he can get around the corner. Two members are stunned. Fuston opts to trinket and activate Blur to trade for Vendetta, but it may not even be enough on its own. This is a surprising amount of pressure, and Nixie's actually running a very weird honor talent. I actually would almost wonder if we have a damage meter to figure out how much damage is actually doing. He's running Mind Numbing Poison, which is when the caster casts a spell, they take a little bit of extra damage. Now, I didn't think that a Demon Hunter was using a lot of spells, and some of them make some of the abilities make sense to be spells, but if every single ability that a Demon Hunter uses is considered a spell, they're basically spamming them, this could be adding into what is creating the pressure for Diabolus. I mean, this certainly would be the case. It would be a lot of added damage. Asgaroth already 50% mana, so this map could be backfiring on Diabolus. Walrix in a little bit of trouble right now, has to activate the unending resolve, and I really like what Houston's doing. He's not afraid to just run away like we kind of talked about, but you can see Burley now in a full fear. Houston, he's got no trinket, he's got nothing. This could be a problem. Nixie gets the full kidney shot, anti-magic zone dropped out by Joel. What is Houston going to do? He has to try to keep himself alive. There's a mortal coil from Walrix on to Burley, on to Houston. They still have a lot of damage, a lot of momentum. Burley might have to drop out the Spearling Totem. Asgroth on 40% mana, Burley way ahead in that regard if DHDK Nation can hold on things are gonna be looking good I actually wonder if I mean at this point you've got to keep going for it but I wonder if you can just run the Paladin over or even split some of your resources onto the Paladin as well the grip and triple stun is a nice play there Asgarath has to make a big trade on his Gladiator's Medallion. He won't be able to get a crowd control. His whole team is low on health. He needs 10 more seconds, 9 more seconds to make it to his big healing cooldown. If he doesn't make it to that point, then they're going to be out of the tournament. 3 more seconds. Walrick's under pressure. Tons of damage. Avenging Wrath available. Asgarath needs to connect to Holy Light. If they disrupt it, Fuston jumps over and imprisons it. If they can keep stopping this Holy Light, they are going to kill Walrick's Blessing of Protection. Can they remove it? They stun Fuston to deny the Demon Hunter's Dispel on that Blessing of Protection. He is going to be able to stay alive. 
five. Burley sits through the blind. A greedy play on his part, but it looks like he's going to get away with it. There was so much pressure on Diabolis. Askarath getting mana rifted for basically the last little bit of his mana, but Burley is still reluctantly sitting what some crowd control. This has to be a trinket spirit link. Nixie's sitting on top of him to punish it. He'll instantly stun him if he trinkets. Burley's not a crowd control. Just press spirit link, win the game, I think, at this point. There's no cooldowns for Asgrath. One more mana rift, and he's totally tapped. Just put a couple of interrupts into the paladin, even, and I think the warlock is going to die. Vendetta is rolling. Nixie's trying to make a power play here and kill Fuston in what could be the last push of Diabolus' tournament. I'm really surprised to see Burley not just shrink it earlier. Walrex, he sat a full blessing of protection. If Burley had just trinketed blind, he could have purged that off. They would have just won the game, but I guess it might not end up mattering. Burley actually gets interrupted, but Fuston and Joel, they have so much self-healing. They're still quite healthy in the situation. Diabolus, I think they've run out of time, Sid. Ascroth, he's got no mana left. What are they going to possibly do? I mean, at this point, what are you going to possibly do? There's no trinket, no darkness for 10. I mean, maybe, maybe you can kill the demon hunter with one big judgment, one big chaos bolt. No. This is a pretty big maybe. Your entire tournament lives riding on a sort of kind of could happen moment, but it's still possible they stun Fuston. Walrix's Infernals have been out for some time. If he can get a Chaos Vault, but Fuston jumped downstairs out of line of sight of the Warlock, now hammering down Nixie, who overextended. Asgrath does not have resources to heal two targets through the amount of pressure that DK, DH, DK Nation are omitting. Now Burley has Geyer's Medallion. He should just make an offensive push, interrupt Asgrath on one heal and end the game. He's in Hammer of Justice, but it's Walrix who is so low on health. I doubt that he makes it out alive here. Goes for the double Mortal Coil, holds on by a threat, Whoa. desperately trying to pull off the miracle. Asgrass Avenging Wrath came off cooldown. He's got some big heals, but he's got no mana to press them. If he even gets one Holy Shock, a target is going to go up on health very quickly. Asgrath is pulling off a miracle right now if his mana just regenerates whatsoever. Walrix has unending resolve. They blind the Death Knight. It's three on one on Diffused him, but Walrix is going to fall. He's at 1%. Can he no kill the way. Demon Hunter with one no. health? Remaining darkness from Fuston. This is likely to make him immune to damage. There's a slim chance that a Chaos Bolt could sneak through. Roughly a 30%, but it's not going to sneak through. Asgroth pulled off a miracle, keeping his team alive for whatever opportunity they could take, but it's just not enough. Walrix gates at 1% across the map is still somehow alive, but ultimately snuffed out by the DHDK. Uh, meanwhile, Feed versus the fake Zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.